Rita and Chaitanya, you have just celebrated 25 years of being temple president in Radhadesh. Mm -hmm. When did the devotees move here? Yeah, the, the devotees uh, moved here in uh, July 80. Bec they all came from basically from Amsterdam. Amsterdam was a city temple which was uh, very crowded with uh, lots of uh, Sankirtan devotees. So there was a desire at that time to uh, have a far farm project. And um, since they couldn't find it in Holland, then they went to look in Belgium and finally they, they found here in Radedes mm -hmm. the place at the end of 79. And then after uh, preparing, like six, eight devotees prepared for six months, cleaning up the place, preparing for the deities to come. Then uh, Shishirad Gopinath came, uh, Lord Jagannath uh, came, who was personally installed by Sri Prabhupada, and also Gornitain. So all the deities here were all installed in Amsterdam, and they came in uh, July 1980 uh, to Radhadis. In the beginning there were like um, 40, 50 devotees uh, who were here, but they, um, the accent was on book distribution and uh, paraphernalia distribution. So most of the time they were out and only a handful of devotees uh, remained here for such a big project. So it was quite a, a struggle at that time. Yeah. There were a lot of Prabhupada disciples, obviously, because it was shortly after Sri Prabhupada's disappearance. Yes. Um, so, so it was um, it was chosen to be a farm project, and we started to develop uh, the garden. We had a very uh, good gardener at that time. We started with the cows. We started to renovate. So it was a blissful struggle, you can say. Nadia Bihari, when did you first start this project? Uh, we first started the project uh, in 1989. There was more and more people start to come to visit 
and we were looking for ideas uh, what we could do. So there was a little shop and one devotee teach us how to make bread. He was from England and uh, because he has to go, they asked me if I would like to try to be the baker to do the bread. So we started in 89 to make bread and very quickly, the next two or three years, it's really increased a lot, so we get a lot of customers. Tell us a bit about the development of the project. Well, at the beginning, we start with a devotee called Ramananda Roy. He went to uh, visit some uh, tourist bus company and he gets some agreement with them that they, they, they will come to visit uh, Dubuis, the next small city, and also to visit us. So at the beginning it was mostly with uh, a travel agency, bus company, they, they start to come regularly and uh, we know in advance when they will come and they, 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 were, go, they were doing a tour of the, the castle and every time at the end they were coming to the bakery and we start by distributing like this a lot of bread and also we start to make some cookies and uh, it picked it up quite quickly, more and more agency and I think in the, the 90s it was actually the peak where we had something like 30 or 40,000 people mainly from those uh, travel agencies were visiting. And now for the last, uh, I would say 10 years from 2000 around, we, had, we are working more with individuals, many people from around who come or tourists in the summer or holiday vacation. And uh, it's become more like uh, the bakery, like uh, a bakery for the local people. Just mix the dough. You right. put the flour, the water, yeah. and it makes. Otherwise, long time ago, years ago, they were doing by hand, you know. Yeah. But that's really super heavy job. So this machine, you can do it much quicker. Yeah, much quicker, and it's. I mean, it's you are not tired so much. What do you think have been the highlights over the years? Um, one of the important highlights is that the, although we bought the project as a farm project, because it is situated in a touristic area, it uh, naturally started to attract uh, tourists. Yes. They came, they knocked on the door and said, uh, can, we, can we look around a little bit? So we were um, forced to start the guided tours yeah. already from in the early 80s. And then we, <clears throat> later we developed it in an organized way. Until now we had like 500,000 uh, people visiting Radades who received uh, guided tours. And then we developed a restaurant, cafeteria, bakery, boutique. And that has been very instrumental in uh, making this place uh, sustainable. So that's that's a very important uh, development that took place by Krishna's arrangement.
Vishwambar, you were born here, so you know the temple very well. Yes, I've uh, lived most of my life here, yeah. Okay. When you take people on the tour of the temple, what do you show? Well, yeah, on the guided tours I do, um, we start with the um, uh, slideshow room, uh, where we show basically general information about what Hare Krishnas are, what is the castle, a little bit of the history of the castle, because it's quite an old castle, it's mm -hmm. from the 13th century, really. Yeah. And uh, so then after that we go to uh, the two living rooms, the blue room, um, yeah, and uh, there I explain a little bit about the uh, uh, the design and uh, so after which uh, we enter the temple. This mm -hmm. is really the highlight of the whole guided tour. Uh, yes. And uh, there I give an explanation of uh, what we can see, you know, the altar, uh, the deities, uh, and then I go into the morning program, uh, the different activities the pujaris do. Uh, uh, so, yeah, I mean the morning program a little bit goes into different aspects of mm -hmm. uh, what we do, uh, uh, a little bit of philosophy, and then I make him sing a little bit Hare Krishna, I mean make him <laughs> if they want to, <laughs> yeah. and uh, show them a little bit uh, how Kirtan works. Then we leave the temple room and we go up on the first floor, and there we visit Prabhupada's room, uh, because mm -hmm. we have seen the big uh, Prabhupada in the temple room now, Yes. and so uh, then there I say a little bit of the story of Sri Prabhupada in really short, uh, concise, uh, showing through paintings and so forth. Goranga Bali Jehabe Kulaka Shari Hari Hari Bali Jena Yani Babe Sunanda, so you have been managing the restaurant here in Radhadesh for about six years with your wife and you've also managed the restaurant in Stockholm. Do you find that people appreciate the vegetarian sanctified food? Um, yes, I do. Um, I have experience from uh, being involved in restaurants already since I joined. Mm -hmm. uh, I had the fortune to be in Australia. Oh, okay. 81, I joined the temple there and uh, the famous cook Kurma, oh, yeah. I'm sure you all know. Uh, I used to cut the vegetables for him <laughs> and then uh, we drove out and we were serving the prasadam. They had already two restaurants there those days. Uh, and then I came to Sweden and from 88 to 97 we were doing this restaurant. And uh, the food which is offered to Krishna is uh, so popular that yeah. um, after some time there's coming so many people you can hardly handle it. So yeah, we definitely have a good experience. <laughs> Do people come to Radhadesh from the local towns as well? Yes, uh, we have seen since me and my wife started to do this restaurant, we rearranged it a little bit. Uh, we have put in uh, the possibility for a tali. We have put in a bainmarie in the serving. Mm -hmm. So when people come in, <coughs> they can immediately see today's menu. So that has attracted many people, yes. Uh, we actually have several local people who come here only because of the kitchen. Because they, they think it's, the food is so nice. Yes. How does this service help you in your spiritual practice? Well, as you know, this Hare Krishna movement was uh, started by Srila Prabhupada. And uh, Srila Prabhupada had many different activities to spread uh, this understanding of the Vedic philosophy and one of them is through uh, vegetarian food and uh, for me it's a lifestyle that's what I identify with mm -hmm. uh, we do nothing else practically uh, we, uh, we meditate and we read purpose books and like that but our heart we have in the restaurant we decorate and we you know, we put flowers and we do so many things. And 
And because it's part of Prabhupada's mission, Lord Chaitanya's mission, uh, you feel very safe. Whatever activity you are doing in Krishna consciousness that makes you happy. And some or other, Krishna has pushed me in this corner. <laughs> So that uh, I'm busy with that. Yeah, so that, that's my shelter, one can say. That's my personal shelter. Okay. Yeah. So Vishnamurti, tell us how BLS came into being. How BLS started? Well, the seed of BLS actually started 1987. That was when I received one of the first copies of the letters of Srila Prabhupada. And for me that was a very powerful experience to associate with Prabhupada's direct letters, his instructions, the way he trained devotees, associated with devotees, encouraged devotees led our movement and it was a time when our movement had going th was going through changes from 1986 and by reading all of those letters I got very inspired to actually somewhat document them. Then in uh, January of 1988 uh, we went to New Zealand with my wife and uh, on the way to New Zealand we went to Los Angeles and there we met Ekanath and Ranjit from the Bhaktivedanta archives and teamed up with them uh, with the idea of helping them to actually produce all these books that they mm -hmm. wanted to. So then we came into Europe uh, and traveled around. We had first the first volume of the uh, conversation set with my former wife, uh, Namakrishna. We went to Sweden, England, Belgium, France, Italy. Uh, we were going everywhere distributing these books and actually what developed was a whole s distribution network uh, which went through for four years where with the archives we managed to produce all the conversation books, the Bhagavad Gita lectures, the Bhagavatam lectures, the collected lectures, the Veda base, etc. We used England as a base, we gravitated to England, we distributed hundreds of thousands of tapes of Srila Prabhupada. So in this way we were developing a service, if you say, to uh, supply the devotees with Srila Prabhupada's teachings. Listening, they don't do very well yet. Get up, Jama. Get up. Get up. Mahaprabhu, you've been here in Radha Desh a long time. 
When did you first come here and what was your involvement? I actually came in 1988. I joined in, in Paris in 1983, the beginning of 83. Mm -hmm. I began to take roots here and I've been here since 88 doing all kinds of services. So I came more with a preaching mood because I did Saint mm -hmm. for many years. So I tried to take care of the French congregation in the beginning. We did, you know, magazine in French and programs and trips. And Saint of course, I continued to do. And But little by little I got more involved with the management. But one of the services I did for the longest period and really developed as much as I could is the boutique. Oh yeah. Uh, I went many years to India shopping. I can't mm -hmm. count how many years I went shopping to Delhi. It was quite an experience to spend a few weeks uh, in Delhi or Jaipur or Vrindavan. So for many years I, I was doing the shopping and the boutique was very much uh, instrumental in helping Radhidesh to raise funds and, and be, be able to maintain the project. Yeah. It still is and yeah. it hasn't changed. but. In, Kamala, do you think it's important to have this boutique in Radhadesh? It is uh, very important to us that every person who comes and visits our shop feels very much welcome. We have all kinds of clients. We have local people, we have tourists, we have uh, Hindus coming to visit us so they can come to the shop and discover Indian handicraft and uh, we have a big variety of uh, items. So, you know, people just come and have a good time in the shop and, you know, pick some presents for their relatives or, Mahaprabhu, in various ways you have played a part in connecting the Hare Krishna movement with society in general. What I started to come, become interested in the, in the 90s was the communications which was taking off in Europe and I became interested in following the seminars that yeah. were going on. So I, uh, It's a big big uh, service to help all the yatras throughout Europe yeah. in having proper communications with yeah. the with society in general and, and presenting Krishna consciousness in a mature way and also reflecting to the leaders of things that maybe need to be addressed. Yeah. I rarely heard any concerns about our theology or our tradition or even Srila Prabhupada. I never heard practically any criticism in those, in those regards. But if we're honest, we have to be able to accept you know, these criticisms and, and <clears throat> bring them to the, to the authorities, yeah. which is not sometimes easy. And then we also have the Bhaktivedanta College, which um, creates a, a, a very nice uh, spirit to have youth around, you know, with, with bhajans, kirtans. It's, it, it creates a very nice uh, atmosphere. And also the teachers who come along, we have their association, and, and this is very inspiring for the, for the Radhes community. Rasamandla, you are the course director for educational studies at Bhaktivedanta College here in Radhadesh. Tell us about the beginning of the college. Well, the college began officially about eight years ago with a 
course which was accredited by the University of Wales Lampeter on theology and religious studies. But prior to that, in the early 90s, Radhadesh developed as a centre for education in ISKCON, particularly with casual courses, seminars, and also the VTE, the Vaishnavan Training Education Group, started here in, I think, 1992. And I personally launched our first teacher training course here in 1995. At first, we were intending to equip students for careers within ISKCON. And we found, actually, it's probably better now to equip them for occupations outside of ISKCON. What are some of the purposes of the college? Well, I think the college is based on a couple of important principles. The first one is that ISKCON is primarily an educational institute and that its purposes are largely educational, albeit it's about spiritual education. Yeah. Uh, secondly, I think the broad principle is there that a, a reflective, thoughtful approach to religious commitment is, is very useful mm -hmm. and that actually in, inquiry and reflection enhance our religious commitment. In fact one of the purposes of the college is to show how our th is to develop various theologies, not a single theology, a theoretical theology, but various theologies as they apply to all the important areas of human endeavor and human knowledge. In other words, we need to have a theology of education, a theology of business. Uh, how about leadership? Do we need to actually be trained in expert leadership? And my own conviction is that we need to be able to, as an institution, to not only speak well and have a good theoretical philosophy, but, for example, to demonstrate what is exemplary leadership. For that, we need training and education. It doesn't come just by chanting Hare Krishna. What are the plans for the future? So we're starting two new courses in September 2012. The first is in educational studies, mm -hmm. so that uh, most of the students will move on to be teachers. The second course is in business administration, because there are many of our members actually want to move into the business field. Uh, and this one is also in, in great need of generating wealth for its mm. projects, not just for its individual members, but also for its various preaching projects. What else do you show people on the tour of the castle? Then we go to the tower and uh, so it's a whole bunch of stairs. <laughs> uh, it's quite steep and quite high. Uh, and so I ask people if everyone wants to come. If not, then I uh, leave them in the Prabhupada's room. There's still oh, yeah. a lot to see and uh, mm -hmm. if anything they could read something. Uh, so then, uh, yeah, the tower, uh, it's quite a beautiful view from there. Yeah. You can uh, see we have like 47 hectares of land, so mostly is forest. The church used to be part of the castle. So all of this I explained from on top. We see the cows, because uh, I show them where the farm is and, and how many cows. I show them the cows. Most of the time you can see them from the uh, roof. Uh, I tell them how couples live outside. and uh, So the celibate monks, they live in the castle. Uh, separately, the ladies on one side, the men on the other. Uh, the small children we have now, like kindergarten or crash here, and uh, yeah, and definitely we have every Sunday Sunday school. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, it used to be a full on Gurukul actually here. Uh, I went here in, in Gurukul till the age of 13. We had a primary school, and uh, yeah. So they like to hear numbers, the people, uh, how many people are you here, and uh, where do you work, where do you get your money. So some work in cooperation with the temple, mm -hmm. and some work outside. Yeah. Then uh, with the guided tour we go down uh, to the bakery, and uh, everyone gets a cookie, uh, some little history about that building, and uh, that's how we really end the guided tour. <laughs> Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama.
Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Shamalika what is your schedule so usually in, during the week we start uh, between 7 and 8. It will depend on the days if there is buses or not. And on the weekends we might start a little bit early because uh, we have to prepare more things like uh, I'm making little rolls, pain au chocolat, pain au raisin. And uh, I'm preparing different stuff you will see on the, yeah. on the desk. And then we have four kind of breads we have to prepare for the weekends, like uh, country bread, olive bread, walnut bread, and uh, raisin bread, mm -hmm. and the cookies, of course. Yeah. What are your plans for the future? Uh, well, I'm just turning this year 50 years old, so I just plan simply to maintain mostly what we are doing until I get a uh, pension on 61, 62, and we are we have calculated that according to the quantity of cookies we made so far every year that when it's time to stop the, the job, it will be around 10 million cookies and we will be very happy. Manu, you grew up here in Radhadesh. What inspires you about the place? I'd like to say it's a combination of factors, both from a spiritual aspect and from a material aspect. As youth, we're not uh, always directly uh, spiritually intrigued, I want to say, because well, as teenagers, you, you want to have fun and, you know, <laughs> run about and do a lot of activities. but. The further we grow, we, we become you know deeper thinkers and we have different interests. And uh, we were given the opportunity from a, a young age to you know grow up with a few, uh, quite a few of us youth in the same age group. And we were always well surrounded in terms by our parents. We always received a very nice education. Something I don't think I realized until much later, until we were maybe in circles that were outside of the community and people always would tell us, wow, your kids talking about us to our parents, you know, they're really very well behaved, they're very mm -hmm. proper and well educated kids. We also are are brought in a, you know, in a philosophy that really educates us in, into a certain style of life. I've learned to really love it so, a lot because there's a lot of things within it that attracts, you know, that, that is attractive to me. Mm -hmm. Just as, uh, for instance, one thing I'm very much involved in is uh, Kirtan, where mm -hmm. we do um, I mean, singing with all the different youth. We mm -hmm. like there's not one evening one of us won't be there in the evening because it's both very fun, but it's also something we spiritually are very connected to and we really appreciate. Okay. And uh, for instance, when we do this, we're very much appreciated by you know the elders or just the other people, the, all the the other members of the community. Please tell us a bit about the Radhadesh Kirtan weekend. So uh, th this festival started. Um, well, actually, the first year it started was in 2009 in uh, January when I wasn't there. I was in India. I was somehow through different circumstances because I was so inquisitive about this festival. I was given the organization of it. The f and then this winter it was 550, which is uh, <laughs> a, big, uh, a big amount more of people. And it really, really attracts a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And very much from all of Europe. We have over uh, 50, 50 different countries that come to the festival now. We even had, uh, this year, we even had some people fly from South America and from America mm -hmm. just for the festival. Huh. So, which is touching, you know, to, to, yeah, to see. But, uh, so yeah, it's, it's fantastic. And it's definitely, if, uh, if one wants to know what a Kirtan experience is, this is the place to be. <laughs> so, yeah.
is Kirtan the main attraction to the youth festivals as well? But Kirtan is definitely, let's say, the element that will attract by far the biggest majority and the vastest majority to come over. And it's, it's very nice. I mean, it's something very special and it's something in which everyone can participate. Yeah. And, and that's the reason why. And uh, these festivals is also a great opportunity to create uh, bridges between different youths from the different countries. Mm -hmm. And we always meet new, new friends. We always make new friends. And, mm -hmm. and yeah, this is something, an advantage, I want to say, that you don't find in a lot of circles around. So, yeah, it's wonderful. And this is all starting at the festivals. Yeah. Where very quickly we become friends and because we, sh we, we share similar goals and uh, activities, it's very, very easy to connect. Like a big family. A very big family. <laughs>did you move to Radadesh? We moved to Radadesh in the end of 95 because the service we developed was expanding, we needed more facilities, England was too expensive for us, Radadesh offered these facilities and so we came and uh, moved into a very wonderful devotional community and we've been here now since uh, 15 years. And how has BLS developed over the last 15 years? Well, it took us three years to establish the mail order, the shop, and the working relationships with the extended team that we were developing. Uh, then in 2001, we started the Bhaktivedanta College, which ran through BLS, which was a seed project, which has developed now into a very successful uh, uh, educational initiative. And also, just at the beginning of 2006, we started working with the community, on a charter. Now that was interesting because I was asked to facilitate that and part of my services was to start again extensive compilations of Srila Prabhupada's teachings in order to facilitate the creation of a charter which was representative of his teachings. And that's actually what evolved into the Vanipedia project. So a nice devotee was serving with us at BLS at that time, back to Iwin from uh, Norway. So he did some research and we came up with the Media Wiki software. Um, very quickly afterwards, Achutananda Prabhu from uh, Colombia, he came forward to help with us. So we had a team and we started the building of the Vanipedia website. Chaitanya, what else attracts people to visit Radhadesh? Also the guest house was a very nice uh, development uh, which came at the right time and which allows the congregation to come and stay with their family, nice facility and, and come for some uh, retreat. And also the recently now the Museum of Sacred Arts uh, has come up with very high-class uh, uh, pieces of art in the form of paintings, sculptures. How did the art museum come about? Well, the background is that uh, we've been talking a lot in Radadesh management how to you know, have some attraction in Radadesh that can, that can bring tourists on a long term. I mean, and then it became a completely different meditation and, and, and project in itself in the sense that the, the goal of the, of the museum is not just to be an attraction for the tourists in Radish, but it, it's much, much more than that. It's, it's about linking with, with our roots, with our Vaishnav roots. It's linking with many wonderful Vaishnav artists that exist in India to, mm -hmm. to the present day, traditional or contemporary. I mean, mm. it's not something that you see very much, devotional art. 
and it's also a way to help the ISCON artists to have a place where they can feel like appreciated and exhibited. As part of a self-sufficiency program, you have invested a lot in a new heating system. Uh, since one and a half year now, we have this uh, ecological uh, wood heater with a biomass wood heater, which is burning a waste product from the, from the carpenters. So in a year time, we are uh, using 2,000 cubic meters of uh, these uh, wood chips which is then um, very ecological and also which is financially very helpful to our community. What is your vision for the future? Uh, there is more openness for devotees to get uh, involved in self-sufficiency and, and cow protection, which was um, some or other overshadowed for the first uh, 25, 30 years in Radades uh, by other activities. But now gradually it's, it's coming back and, and the devotees were very happy when we got uh, last year a cow and a calf and milk for the deities. Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Dear Krishna, you're one of the local devotees, you've been here for about 20 years. Um, have you developed a strong attachment to the deities here in Radhadesh? Yes, I can say that uh, out of all the temples I have been visiting, this temple has always uh, been attracting me the most. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, the, the feeling, you know, I'm getting here is like, it's my family. Uh -huh. And I just, you know, want to be, you know, here, like, like at home. And as for the Deities, yes, I have been worshipping the Deities here now for 18 years. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, I have to say, there is a personal relationship with yes. them. 
Krishna Shakti, you've been doing uh, deity worship here in Radhadesh for about 12 years. What do you find special about deity worship uh, compared with other services? Uh, I found the deities are so enchanting that it's uh, very nice to serve them directly. It's kind of more privileges. I think it's also together with my nature, I just like it. Do you have a favorite festival? Oh yes, without a doubt, it's Rata Yatra. Ah, okay. <laughs> Because I've been worshipping Jagannath for quite um, many years. Yeah. And uh, I mean, Jagannath is really my favorite. So, you know, taking him into the car and then yeah. driving, you know, to mm -hmm. the places. We had like three Rata Yatras, oh, yeah. mainly here in the neighborhood. Yeah. We have one in Antwerp, we have one in uh, Den Haag mm -hmm. and Amsterdam. Oh, yeah. Amsterdam's coming up now. Okay. So, these are always the festivals I look forward to. Yes. So Vishnamurti, tell us about Banipedia. Hmm. Banipedia. Um, Srila Prabhupada requested the devotees to practice three sadhanas. The sadhana of chanting Hare Krishna, the sadhana of worshipping the deity, and the sadhana of studying his books. Vanipedia is all about helping devotees fulfill that third sadhana. How to be inspired, empowered and facilitated in the study of Srila Prabhupada's teachings. And we're taking advantage of the web to actually establish what we call a congregational study. Prabhupada wanted us to cooperate together, it's obvious. We want Srila Prabhupada's teachings to influence uh, the world. We want Prabhupada's teachings to be accessible to the world. And so with Vanipedia we're being bold and dynamic in doing just that. Vanipedia is trying to prepare Srila Prabhupada's teachings for the future. A time when there will be no more disciples of Srila Prabhupada on the planet. A time when people will only encounter Srila Prabhupada via his Vani. It's difficult to imagine that any one person can fulfill the vision that Srila Prabhupada had for his movement. Prabhupada is such a powerful devotee who is so ambitious to spread Krishna consciousness and he has such a uh, purity to him, an unparalleled purity, that it, many devotees find it difficult to follow in those footsteps. What else is part of the vision for the future? 
I think the Bhaktivedanta Vedanta College has a lot of scope to, to further uh, develop as a, uh, in this ways. Rather, this can be like a center of education. Do you have a personal wish for the temple? So, as a development, I see more facilities for Griastas, and ultimately, you know, I could see a nice temple for, for Radha Gopinath. That would be the crown mm -hmm. <laughs> to, to build a nice temple for, for their lordships. <laughs>